Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. Tonight's stories center around the mysterious world of skinwalkers, with a shout out to Bigfoot thrown in to one of the stories. Hey, we can't forget our good friend Bigfoot. Hopefully, he'll have internet access tonight and be able to join us. He does love when he's discussed here on the internet, or so I've heard. So, if you're out there, Bigfoot, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, together, together. I live right next to a Navajo reservation and have made many friends with the people there my age. We like to hang out, play video games, and just do normal teenager things. I walk to my best friend's house as he only lives about a mile away from me. This isn't a long trek, and normally it only takes me about 20 minutes. I've made this trip dozens of times and have grown very comfortable with it. I know all of the people along the way, so I'm not scared or on edge. There is, however, a patch of forest about midway between our houses that I must pass through. It is a bit unnerving at times. There's always this feeling of being watched. This was a regular occurrence for me, so I tried to just tell myself to ignore it and that it was just my mind playing tricks on me. Then one day, I was at my friend's house a little longer than I meant to be, and when I left, it was already getting dark. I reached that stretch of forest right as the sun disappeared from the sky. I shivered and readied myself to begin the journey through it. I was just ten steps in when I heard a branch snap. You know the sound, the one that screams that there is definitely someone or something there with you? I froze, not sure what to do. Should I run? Should I turn around and book it back to my friend's house? I didn't know. So I whispered, Hello? Hearing my voice crack as the words came from my lips. I don't know why I ever opened my mouth, but it was out there, so I listened for a reply. My heart sank when the answer came back in the form and sound of my own voice. Hello? I started to hyperventilate, my heart pounding against my chest. Hello? My voice came at me again, but not from my mouth. Something was mimicking me. I wanted to run, but my feet felt cemented to the ground. I couldn't scream. I couldn't reply as my voice echoed over and over from just a short distance away. I couldn't pinpoint exactly where it was coming from. It sounded like it was coming from everywhere, surrounding me. Hello? 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 It repeated. Stop it, I finally managed to say. Everything went silent. For a long minute, nothing happened. The air grew stale, and I realized for the first time that there were no typical sounds of the forest. No bugs, no frogs or crickets. Nothing. I stood there, terrified, waiting to see what would happen next. Stop it! It mimicked me back. I'd had enough and was willing my legs to move, but before I could take a step, I heard rustling in the bushes. 20 feet to my left. I watched in horror as a deer head with huge antlers protruded from the brush. As it came further out, it stood up on two legs. I took off. I flew out of those woods and all the way home in record time. I said nothing to my mother when I got home, just went up to my room, lay down, and thought about what just happened. My mother came into my room at some point and asked me if everything was okay. I replied yes, I was just tired. I don't know why I didn't tell her. I guess I might have been afraid of her reaction. 
I called my friend and told him everything. He freaked out and told me that no matter what else happened tonight or what I heard, do not reply or look out of the window. Well, this terrified me even more. He said to call him in the morning and he would explain further that first he had to speak with his grandfather as soon as possible. That night, I didn't sleep at all. I stayed awake listening for every little sound the night brought. Around 3 a.m., just as I was about to drift off, the air changed. The sounds of the night fell silent. I felt my heart begin to pound. I lay there and waited, pulling the covers up over my head like a child, too scared to move. It came after a long moment. Hello? I cried. It was all I could do. Hello? Stop it! It mocked what I had said in the woods again. It was terrifying enough when it copied what I said, but then it did something new. It called me by name. Amy. It used my mother's voice. Amy. Amy, come here. Hello? Stop it! My voice again. For the rest of the night, the creature outside my window called my name in my mother's voice and repeated what I had said in the woods in my own voice, over and over. In the morning, just as the sun broke through the dark, it finally stopped. I fell into a fitful sleep and awoke around noon when my friend called to tell me that he had spoken to his grandfather and could now explain exactly what was happening to me. He said there are creatures that they call Yi Nadalushi, he who goes on all fours, or Skinwalker. He explained that it was an evil witch who uses dark magic to transform into an animal with the attributes it requires, and that now that it had caught my scent, it knew me. I was also given a warning that since it now knew me, it would follow me always, and I would always have to be careful. Last night, I heard scratching on my window, then a low hum. The creature began saying my name again, and also started saying more things in my mother's voice. At one point, it started calling my name and drawing it out. Amy. It tried to get me to come outside or to open the door and let it come in the house. This went on all night. At this point, I feel like I'm going crazy. I don't know what to do. Is it seriously going to stalk the shadows around me for the rest of my life? I don't think I can take that. I have a story that happened to my uncle. He used to tell this story when we'd go camping, and it scared the daylights out of me every time I heard it. We're Mormons, living in Utah, and my uncle Mark went on a church mission at the age of 19. They sent him to an Indian reservation in Arizona. They paired him up with a companion named Carl. When they first arrived, there was a huge rift with the locals on the reservation about them being there. Many of them didn't want my uncle and Carl staying on the reservation. Eventually, they came to a compromise, and they said they could stay on the outskirts of the property in a trailer. The reservation wasn't very big and was located next to a very heavily wooded area. The first night, they were trying to sleep when all of a sudden, their trailer started to shake violently back and forth. Startled and not quite sure what was happening, they climbed under the table for cover. Uncle Mark said he could distinctly hear two groups of people pushing from either side of the trailer. After about five minutes, it stopped. The next day, they made their rounds on the reservation and were talking to some of the locals. 
Carl made a comment to one of the families that their trailer was shaken the night before. The family members got very quiet and they excused themselves, saying they had to leave and quickly walked away. Both Carl and Uncle Mark thought it was strange but didn't think all that much of it at the time. The next night, it happened again. They awoke to their trailer being shaken back and forth. Again, they climbed under the table until it stopped. This went on for two more nights. Anytime they tried to talk to anyone about it, they'd grow quiet, make an excuse to leave, and quickly walk away. Uncle Mark started thinking that due to the tension brought on by their arrival, the locals were doing this to scare them off the reservation. Then they went into a convenience store and were talking to one another about how frustrated they were with the situation. The clerk overheard them and said, Hey, they can't talk about it. It's forbidden. Confused, Carl asked him, Can't talk about what? That's when the clerk told them about skinwalkers. He said skinwalkers are evil entities that were once Native American witches. If a Native American talks about this, then the skinwalkers will come for their souls. Uncle Mark and Carl left the store totally baffled. They thought it was just another scare tactic to get them to leave. So that night, when the shaking began again, my uncle decided to be brave and confront them. He went to the trailer door, flung it open and yelled, Hey! When he did that, he saw three animals run off, two wolves and a bear. But they looked strange. They had almost human features. As he watched them run towards the trees, all three creatures stood up on two legs and began slowly walking towards the trees, cackling in human voices. Well, this scared them so badly, the next morning they called their mission president and asked to be moved to a new location. They were relocated that very day. For another year, nothing happened. Then one day, they announced that Carl would be transferred to another city, and my Uncle Mark would be getting a new mission companion, Jimmy. The mission president and Uncle Mark had to drive about an hour to pick up Jimmy from the airport. The road they traveled went right through the boundaries of the reservation. They arrived at the airport around 8 p.m. and met Jimmy. Then they prepared for the long ride home. The mission president told Jimmy, We're driving through dangerous area at night, so we can't make any stops. If you need to use the restroom, you need to go now. Jimmy said, No, I'm fine. The president was serious enough that it even freaked out Uncle Mark. He said, I am not kidding. Go do your business. Jimmy still insisted he was fine, so they hit the road. When they were about 30 minutes into the drive and just going through the reservation boundaries, Jimmy started to complain that he needed to pee badly. The mission president said, Sorry, can't stop. You'll have to hold it. But Jimmy kept saying, Really, I can't hold it. So he stopped the car and said, Okay, but you'll have to do your business right here, right next to the door. And if I say get in the car, you better get in this car fast. With a look of confusion, Jimmy said, Yeah, all right. So he opened the door and started doing his business. About five seconds later, the mission president, saying nothing, yanked Jimmy back into the car and floored it. Both Jimmy and Uncle Mark started freaking out. What's going on, they both asked. The mission president said nothing, just increased the speed of the car. All of a sudden, Uncle Mark saw something next to the car to his right. A giant wolf-looking man was running on two feet next to the car. Uncle Mark looked at the speedometer and they were going well over 60 miles an hour and still increasing in speed. The wolf creature kept right next to them for the next 10 minutes until it finally took off for the trees. The three of them 
hadn't spoken through the entire ordeal, nor did they speak for the rest of the drive. When they finally arrived at their destination, Jimmy got out of the car, shaking. He asked the mission president, What did I just see? The only reply he got was, Next time I tell you to take care of your business before we get into the car, you take care of your business before we get into the car. I've been reading a lot of Skinwalker experiences on Reddit lately. Since I am a paranormal investigator who actually goes out into the field searching for these creatures, I decided to share my own encounters. One that we strongly believe was a skinwalker, and later, a different encounter with Bigfoot. I have some friends near Shiprock, New Mexico, that are big time into researching about Bigfoot and skinwalker sightings. They've been featured on shows like Finding Bigfoot, Coast to Coast AM, countless podcasts talking about the paranormal, and on several History Channel programs. These people are the real deal. A few years ago, my wife and I were on vacation, and part of our trip involved driving through their town, so we took advantage of the opportunity and decided to spend a few nights hanging out with them. We met up, went to dinner, and talked about our personal paranormal experiences and their recent Bigfoot and Skinwalker sightings. I wanted to experience searching for Skinwalker evidence myself, so during the course of our conversation, I asked if they would be willing to take me out into the fields the following night to help search for these elusive creatures. Being that most of them are Native Americans, they were very hesitant, and only one of them, my buddy, agreed to it. The rest of the group decided to meet me on my final night there to take me to look for a Sasquatch instead. The following day, my friend arrived at my hotel to pick me up around 5 p.m. We must have driven about an hour and a half out of town, mostly on dirt roads, to a place most locals knew to have skinwalker activity. By the time we reached the location, everything was dark. He shut the truck off and, as with most paranormal investigations, we sat and waited, trying to listen for anything out of the ordinary. For the most part, it was quiet. Other than a bunch of annoying crickets making noise, nothing much was happening. My buddy told me about his recent sightings and his own encounters with these medicine men. Long story short, after about an hour, he told me to get out of the truck, walk to the front, and try to listen out for anything strange. He said if something happened, he would immediately turn the truck lights on and illuminate whatever might be there. Basically, he wanted to use me as human skinwalker bait. I was hesitant for a moment, but since I had a weapon on me, I thought it would be okay. But I also knew that bullets wouldn't do a thing to a skinwalker, unless they were blessed and had a specific type of white powder on them and mine didn't. Just as I made my decision to get out of the truck, the night turned even darker. But this wasn't a regular dark night type of dark. This darkness had a purpose behind it, and it felt extremely ominous. It also got very cold, and we both noted that the crickets had gone quiet. After hesitating for a bit, I decided to open the truck door and get out, but before my foot even touched the ground, we heard a loud whistle. Now this wasn't a distant whistle. This was right next to us, and it sounded like it was inside of the cab of the truck with us. Obviously I thought someone had snuck up on us, or that my buddy was trying to mess with me. But when I turned to look at him, he had gone completely white. The expression on his face had totally changed. Seeing him that afraid put me on high alert. I tried to snap him out of it, but he seemed frozen. The whistling continued, and I was screaming at my friend at this point. Eventually, he came to his senses and began to react to what was happening around us. 
He then immediately turned on the truck. We grabbed our flashlights and looked all over the place to see what it was. But of course, we found no one. Feeling nervous, we decided to leave that place right away. The next day, he and a few of his friends picked me up again at the hotel to take me to search for Bigfoot near Shiprock Mountain. While investigating, we found what's known in the field as a Bigfoot nest. Inside the nest were tons of dried out, eaten animal carcasses and bones, mostly deer. As we were trying to figure out what lived there, we suddenly heard a loud Bigfoot yelp. Now this wasn't a coyote or a mountain lion type of yelp. This sound you felt in your bones. You could literally feel the vibration in your chest. Of course, we all started to look around. I didn't see anything, but two of my partners saw something moving along the ridge. They were scared enough to draw and cock their weapons. About 10 minutes later, we began to hear footsteps all around us. We couldn't see who or what was making it because it was so dark even with our flashlights on. When the footsteps advanced on us, making it obvious that whatever it was wasn't afraid of us, we decided to leave there ASAP. Well, those are my personal experiences, and they're 100% true. I don't expect anyone to believe me. My late friend and I had talked many times about what happened that night. I'm still in contact with everyone who took me out those nights, and I still go into the fields here in Nevada following Skinwalker, Bigfoot, and ghost sighting leads, as you can see on my YouTube channel. Well, thank you for listening. There will be a link to this man's YouTube channel, Seeking Legends, in the description below. This happened last week while I was camping in northern Utah. My friend and I had just gotten to the campsite around 4 p.m. She needed the bathroom, so she walked through the woods through an empty campsite. As she was walking, I saw her pause and look around. I called out and asked if she wanted me to go with her, but she said no, she was fine. And she continued to the bathroom, then returned. Later that night, we were sitting around the campfire with two other friends, and she seemed a little on edge, so I started joking with her. But instead of laughing, she got very serious and told me that she had seen something just past the tree line when she was walking to the bathroom earlier. She described it as having pale skin and the face having a mix of human and canine features with very black eyes. It was hunched over on all fours, but its back legs looked distorted. She said she could tell it would be very tall if it were to stand on its hind legs. Also, she could see the spine protruding from its back. While telling her little sister about it later, she added that while she was up there by the tree line, it had walked directly in front of her, stopped, and stared at her. Her sister said it was most likely a coyote, a wolf with mange, or a hairless bear, although bears aren't really common up here. But what she described was very humanoid, so I'm not sure it was just a weird-looking canine or a cryptid, southwest or otherwise. I kind of wish I had seen it, but I'm also kind of glad I didn't as well. I personally don't know what to think. If anyone could shed some light on this, or lives up here and has seen something similar, please let me know. I just recently learned about skinwalkers. Could this be one? I live in central Midwest America. And before the quarantine, I never had any such encounters like this in my town. I was driving home around 10 p.m., and my neighborhood is surrounded by thick woods. I live about a block away from a thicket. 
I was about a hundred feet away from my house, and I glanced in the rearview mirror, and there I saw a black figure, almost like a living shadow. It was about seven feet tall, human-looking, with inverted knees and tall horns that resembled a goat's sprouting from its head. It wasn't looking at me as it crossed the street, but even as I write this, I'm getting the same chills down my back and neck as I did when I first saw it. I glanced back a second later, and it was gone. So I convinced myself that it was just my imagination. I have seen shadow people before, but none this large, and nothing with horns. Around 2 a.m. that same night, I was scrolling through Instagram in my bed with my window open. I heard a low whistle. It was one note and drawn out only for about three seconds. The whistle repeated four times. Then I heard slow, heavy footsteps right underneath my second floor bedroom window. I was paralyzed with fear, so I didn't go look to see what it was. I like to think that my intuition is good, and nighttime noises don't normally spook me. The next day, I asked my family if they heard the whistling. My brother said he had, but he thought it was me. I haven't seen the creature since, but the whistling has happened two other times, both times around 2 or 3 a.m. There have also been multiple instances where all of the neighborhood dogs started howling at the same time, and then all stopped at the same time. Does anyone have any idea what I might have seen, or know of anything that whistles at night? Well, those were horrifying stories, weren't they? That mission president from the second story was like every mother out there, warning kids to use the bathroom before getting into the car. And Jimmy was like every kid, swearing that he's fine. Then five minutes into the trip, needs a pit stop. What is it about cars that shrinks people's bladders? Now there is a mystery for the ages. On a serious note, I would like to thank every one of you for listening tonight and for your continued support. It means the world to me. You really don't know. It means the world. And if you stop by for a listen and haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to do so and hit that notification bell so you'll be reminded to join us here every week. It's always a party when you're here. So until next time, Stay scared, my friends, and please, do your business before you get in the car. <laughs>